Hi, I'm Turbo, and this is part three of my four-part guide on how to bend parts in Overclock and PC Building Simulator. In this video, we'll be focusing on RAM bending. Uh, please keep in mind that this does require quite a bit of cash to do in career mode. However, if you'd like to do this in free build due to lack of career funds or for some other reason, I'll go over what changes you need to make in order to do so at the end of the video. Uh, so there's a couple of different ways you can do this. Our test benches don't need to be as rigorously controlled because we're not testing for a specific wattage or temperature, just stability. This means you can do this in your final OC build if you want, or you can do like me and just use your CP bin trick. Uh, personally, I find this a bit easier as the case is, is just less crowded. Uh, so let's head over to the shop and get some RAM. Right now, the best RAM for OCing is the A-Data Z1 stick. 4600. Uh, the batch sizes are going to change here a bit as well. Now I did this in batches of 100. A word of warning though, pretty much every single batch you buy will most likely yield a good stick of RAM you can use unless you're doing really small batches of maybe 10 to 20. Therefore you're not really going to be able to use the save and reload method to minimize costs since each batch will usually give you something worth having. In other words, this is the money sink of overclocking in career. Just keep that in mind when you consider how large a batches you want to do. Don't forget to add in a stick of cheapo RAM to act as a separator if you need it. At the moment, I have three sticks of RAM in my inventory from previous jobs that I'll use for this. Again, make sure you save your game just in case, and let's buy these sticks and get to work. Okay, so the first part of the bin process for RAM is pretty easy. All you need to do is install a stick of RAM. You can also do this multiple sticks at a time if you want to. Um, however, I found through all of my testing that just doing one at a time, so the only RAM clips you need to worry about are these two, makes everything go a whole lot quicker. Um, doing it this way, I can actually bin a batch of 100 in about 30 minutes. All right, so once we have that installed, load into the BIOS. Crank RAM voltage to 1.9. Apply and restart and then see if it survives or if it doesn't. Okay, this one's a good chip, uh, so we'll turn that off. We'll pull this back out and we'll move on to the next one and we just do that for all the sticks in our batch. And when we get done, we'll go through and we'll see how many we have left that survived and we'll test those. So without further ado, let's get to work.
All right, so I've gone through and I've tested all 100 sticks. I got rid of all the brick sticks already um, to find a final yield result of nine. I've got eight in the inventory and one in the board already. So what we're going to do here with this first stick is I'm going to show you the proper way to go through and find the max frequency of the sticks. Um, it's a pain. It takes a long time. But doing it this way, you can go through and you can test each stick and find exactly what the max frequency of each stick is. Because even though it's 1.9 volts, there is a little bit of disparity there. I think the lowest that I've ever found was about 6,020 megahertz, and the highest I've ever found is 6,057. 6, so first thing we need to do is load into the BIOS. And we're going to come over here to RAM OC, and we're going to turn this RAM speed all the way up. Uh, don't forget to do your voltage and then we're going to head over to CPU OC and we're going to turn this base clock up to 144. Alright, and if you go back over here you'll see your RAM speed is 6048. This is going to be our starting point. So next we need to make sure that our CPU speed isn't some crazy number like this. So we need to turn our ratio down. And I usually just keep it right around um, the stock of 4200, whether it's just a little over, a little under, it doesn't really matter. I also go ahead and turn the CPU voltage up just in case, so we don't have to worry about it. All right, and we'll apply and restart. We'll boot back into the OS, and then we'll load into OCCT, and just leave it on automatic and immediately hit on. And what we're doing here is we're just testing for stability so we don't really need to make it all the way through if you get to 20 seconds okay you're stable okay so we know that so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back into our spreadsheet or whatever you're using to take your notes and we're gonna note this speed which was 6048 on the best stable clock and then we can go back in here and we can boot back into the BIOS and what we're going to do for now is we're just going to add one tick to the base clock to bring this up to 6090. And this, what this does is it'll give us a starting point or a starting value range with which to test our new, with which to test our ramp stick. So we'll go in and we'll run this again to see if it's stable. And we can see that it's not. So we'll turn that off. We'll come over here and we'll note that 6090 on the lowest unstable clock. And now as we move on to the other RAM clock uh, ticks, we're looking for numbers that are in between these two so we could start narrowing this range down. All right, so we'll go back in here. We'll boot back into the BIOS. And we're going to come over here to RAM OC, and we're going to go down one tick on the RAM speed. And then we're going to turn up the base clock a couple of ticks. So we've got a value that's in between, a 6075. Now, if you had gone too far one, you'd see, okay, we got too high a value. That's beyond what we know is unstable. And if you went too low, this is 6034. Okay, we, we know a speed that's higher than that that is already stable, so we don't need to test that. So 147 is going to be our next at 6075. Again, always check your CPU speed to make sure it's not some crazy number. Apply changes and restart. and test for stability. And it's not stable. So we'll turn that back off. We'll come over here. We'll make a note of this. And we're just going to keep going. So for the rest of this, I'm going to speed things up a little bit. I'm, I'm going to try not to speed it up too much so you can actually see what I'm doing as I'm doing it. Uh, if it's still too much, uh, please feel free to hit the little gear icon down in the lower right hand corner of the uh, video window and turn the speed down a little bit and of course pause whenever you need to.
Okay, so after we finally worked our way through the entirety of the RAM clock range, we see that our best stable clock is 6048 MHz. Uh, now, if you're going to continue doing this for all of your sticks, uh, you can just basically pull this stick out, and because you've already got this um, highest value clocked in of 284 base clock, um, just start at this top of the range and then work your way backwards. So what, what you'll do basically is you're going to start at the very lowest tick of the RAM speed and then you're going to turn that up as you go and turn base clock down as you go. So you work your way up in this one and then the next one you work your way down. Uh, it makes it a lot quicker that way instead of just, you know, doing factory reset and starting at the bottom every time. So now that you know the hard way, uh, let me show you the easy way. So at the moment, the best combination for CPU clocks and RAM clocks is about 4.422 gigahertz on the CPU and 6030 megahertz on the RAM. Um, and I did this with nearly 500 sticks bend with the, the max I could find out of those almost 500 sticks being 6057. Um, however, we run into this other limit due to thermal throttle limits on the CPU. Um, the best I could do on the CPU is 4.455 gigahertz, but because of the way that the relationship between the base clock and the RAM speed works is that you can't find anything with a better combination of the 4.422 and 6030. So because we know that, um, we can just dial in that specific clock and then test for all our sticks at that. And if you find one at 6030, then you've got one that can at least match what we know to be the best possible combination of CPU and RAM clocks at the time. So to do that, we're just going to turn this down to 201 and then we're going to go in here and we're going to adjust this up until we hit 6030. Uh, remember always make sure your RAM voltage is turned back up. Make sure your CPU speed isn't some crazy value. And then apply and restart and we'll just check all of our the rest of our RAM sticks for stability at this. Alright, so I've uh, tested all these RAM sticks. Uh, it looks like we got extremely lucky with this batch and all of them meet the minimums. So um, if I had run into one that, say I, I ran into one of the sticks that would only do 6020 stable, and instead of putting the 6030 over here I would have just said lowest unstable clock. Um, that way I'd, I'd just keep a note of it and I know which stick I need to avoid. So now that we know that, um, if you did have some that were unstable below 6030, you would, you know, of course, you would go back into um, the inventory and make note of those where they're at and everything, and then you would add the other sticks that you can use into your four slots um, on your rig. So, so I guess I should make a note there. You do not need eight sticks of RAM to do this. Um, the current best for memory channels right now is just quad channel so you only need four sticks to take full advantage of quad channel speeds you don't need eight so you don't need to test for tons and tons and tons of RAM so that is pretty much it uh, let me cover what changes you need to make for free build real quick so I'll make a, I'll just make a note here on this rig we don't really need to go over to free build for this so what you're gonna do is you're basically going to combine the 1.9 volt brick binning and the 6030 megahertz stability bin in the same thing. So what you do is is you would go into your uh, inventory 
for memory and free build, you would select, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's right here on free build, you would select the Z1 4600, you would install one, and then you test it for 1.9 volts. If it doesn't, you know, if it bricks it, then okay, pull that one out, grab another one, stick it in, just keep doing that over and over again until you find one that does 1.9 volts. And then you'll go into the BIOS, and again, you'll dial in the specs uh, for the 6,030 megahertz, and then you'll test for stability there. If it's not stable at 6,030, okay, we know that's not good enough, so pull that back out and just keep going again. And keep doing that until you find your first stick uh, that's 6,030 uh, megahertz stable. Once you do that, leave that first stick alone. Do not pull it back out. And what you need to do then is you need to open up another slot and you need to stick a second stick in. And so then you'll start testing sticks in this slot. And you go through and you do the same thing again. You, you check for the 1.9 volts. Once you find one, you check for the 6,030 megahertz stable. Um, so, and once you find both of those, you move on to the third stick. And so on and so forth to the fourth stick. And that's really the only thing that you have to be aware of that changes for, for free build. Um, it's a lot easier to accidentally remove a good stick of RAM, though. I'll tell you that much, because there's not any of this, you know, piping and everything and wiring in the way. It's just a couple of clips, and if you get really zoned out, it would be really, really easy to remove one of these sticks. Granted, they're not horribly difficult to find, um, but still, it can be pretty time-consuming. So, that's pretty much it. Uh, this is how we bend RAM. It's not horrible I suppose but definitely the most time-consuming process uh, this also means that you're done binning yay so for the next video we'll finally get into overclocking all these golden parts if you like the video please hit that like button if you want to be notified when the next video hits make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell to turn on notifications I'll see you in the next one